What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be looking at some key zones using both the Novation Impulse 25 controller as well as Ableton Live. So I'll start by showing you the different zones you can set up on the hardware controller and then we'll finish off the video by showing you how to use key zones if you don't have a hardware controller that can do that independently. Ableton actually has some awesome tools for us to use. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So starting with the impulse controller, right now I have it set up so that we have two different key zones. And what that means is that this first range from C1 to B2 right here, this is playing a sub bass instrument. And then from C2 to B3, we're actually playing a different instrument, a piano. And so starting off, let's take a look in Ableton Live of how to set this up. So you can see here, I have a group called Impulse Zones, and within that I have a piano instrument, and I have a bass instrument. Now the only thing that we really need to worry about here is the input. And so normally, we're going to be looking from all ins, all inputs, and then we can select a specific channel. So for zone two, I'm gonna set that up on channel two, as you can see it's already set up here. And for the bass instrument, we're gonna set that up on zone channel one. So if we play it right here, you'll see we're actually triggering that instrument. So now that we have both of these tracks actually separated, we can start to take a look at the hardware controller. So we actually have this zones button right here, and that will bring up some different options for us to set up our zones. So the first option here simply just turns the zones on or off. So if we were to turn these off right now, we no longer have those separated zones. So let's go ahead and turn them on and navigate to the next setting using this plus button here. So our next setting is all about zone one. The first couple of settings are just setting up your first zone. And you can see here it says Z1, and that's how you can tell what zone you'll actually be affecting. So there are four different zones that you actually have access to on the impulse controller itself. And so you have the same parameters for each zone. They just affect that specific zone. So our first option here will actually set the start point of the zone. So you can actually press a key on your keyboard and that will change the zone to start with whatever key you touch. So we're gonna press C2 here and then we're gonna navigate to the next option, which is the end of the zone. So these first two settings basically dictate where the zone is going to trigger from. So I've set it up to trigger from these keys. So the next setting that we have is actually an octave setting. And if we change this, let's say we go to a negative one octave, it will actually transpose all the notes in that actual zone. So basically these keys can be set to any octave that you want. We're just gonna leave that at zero. And again, if we press plus one, then we're transposing up an octave. Let's just leave that the way it is, and let's take a look at the next setting. So this next setting is really important, and it correlates to what we've already set up in Ableton Live. Now, if you remember, we had the bass triggering from channel one. So right now, we're selecting the channel of output that this zone is going to feed to. So in Ableton, we have our bass instrument set to channel one, and on the actual Novation, we have this zone outputting to channel one. So that's kind of the difference here. And you'll see when we set up this next zone, we're gonna have it outputting to channel two. And you can go so on and so on with the four zones that you have available to you. So the next and last option that we have here is the actual port. Now this would be different, say, if we were using the MIDI inputs that we have available to us. You see we have a few different options, such as all, so we could be using the MIDI ports on the back of the Novation and the USB ports. But for now, we're just using the USB, so we'll keep it set there. And now if we cycle to the next option, you'll see we're actually affecting zone two. So let's go ahead and set up zone two really quick. We want it to start from this C3 right here, and we want it to end on this key right here, this C4. And then we'll go to the zone two octave. I think that's fine, we'll just leave it how it is. And then here we have the zone two channel, and we're outputting to 
channel number two. So that's really important. We have this zone outputting to channel one and we have this zone outputting to channel two. So everything looks good here. Let's just make sure we're on USB just so that it's accurate. And then you'll see if we press the plus button again, we're moving on to zone three, but we're kind of running out of keys here. So we'll just keep it simple with zone one and zone two. So now if you just make sure that your tracks are actually armed within Ableton, and it looks like both of these are, we can actually play both instruments at the same time. Now I'm no pianist, but we have that option available to us. So that is actually how you set it up on the Novation hardware itself. It's really simple to get going and it's very, very useful. So alternatively, what we can do is head on down to the very first option where we have the keyboard zone on button and let's just go ahead and turn that off for now and exit out of the zones function. So now let's actually go ahead and take a look at this Ableton Zones track that I have set up. So if your keyboard does not have the option to create its own zones within the hardware, like we did here on this LCD screen, then Ableton actually has a tool and it's the instrument rack that will allow us to create our own key zones. So let's go ahead and arm this track and this track only. And if we strike a key, you can see that actually both instruments are triggering. And these are the same instruments that we had up in this bass and piano channel, but now they're just grouped within an instrument rack. So you can drag and drop different instruments here. Right now I only have the two. And one thing also that we should know is on the input, we're selecting from all channels. So this is just a really easy way to get input from any MIDI device that you have hooked up to your computer. You can just hook it up, make sure you're receiving from all channels, and then you don't have to worry about conspicuous routings or things like that. So now let's jump back into the instrument rack itself. And here we have a few different zones. We have the key zone, the velocity zone, and the chain zone. So all of these really have their own uses, but today we're just gonna be looking at the key zone itself. So you can see as I strike a key on the keyboard, we're getting this red indicator showing us where I'm actually striking the key. So also we have these green bars correlating to each of the instruments that we have. So what we can actually do is take these green bars and position them exactly how we want it. So remember we had the grand piano coming in on C2 right here. And then we had the bass instrument finishing up on B2, which is actually the key right before C2. So if we put it like that, now we are essentially splitting the keyboard exactly like we just did only this is just fully in Ableton. And we're not actually using separate MIDI channels to get this desired effect. Now, one more thing that you can do with zones that is pretty cool in Ableton is that we can actually overlap them and put a little fade in. If you see this little bar that's on top of the, the larger zone bar, we can actually drag that and it will create a fade. So now if we play these keys right here, you can see we have a mix of both instruments and you can actually make this fade as large or as small as you want. If you don't want any fade between, then just simply pull back the fade handles all the way and make sure that these keys are separated. And then we have a bass instrument and we have a piano. And the cool thing about this is that they're all on the same track. So that's pretty helpful rather than making a group like this impulse zones group and separating the channels here. It's a little bit more efficient to just use the zone function within the instrument rack. So that is how you set up key zones on both the Novation Impulse controller as well as in the Ableton software. So I hope you guys learn something new and implement this technique into your own productions. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you next time.